Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. We're going to be talking playwriting and dramaturgy and how plays are made with the amazing Martine Green Rogers. Hi, Martine. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. <laughs> Likewise. Um, it's going to be great fun, everybody. Um, so the short version of why I wanted to do this with Martine is uh, she's brilliant. She's amazing. She's hilarious. She's a fabulous person. But she's also the president of the Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of America. She has worked as a dramaturg for my play, The Book of Will, at Oregon Shakespeare Festival a couple years ago, which is where I got to work with her. And I just think she's the smartest lady out there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, but truly, I the whole point of this series of interviews is to let people in who may be at the start of their careers or mid or wherever, um, to answer the question of how new plays are made, how any play is made, <laughs> um, how do we get from the building of a coalition of collaborators to create this thing? How do we understand a new play? How do rewrites work? How do playwrights work with dramaturgs, directors, all of it? Um, and you are such a critical piece of that. And I want people to know more about what you do, what dramaturgs do, what you particularly do as a dramaturg, what you like about what you do. I don't know, all the things. <laughs> All the things. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to maybe start by telling us a little bit about your background? Like, how did you come to be a dramaturg? Um, what your, all the many positions you are now. Um, sure. And yeah, how did you, how did you get to be this? Oh, that's actually a really good question. So uh, I, in undergrad, I went to Virginia Wesleyan College, which is now Virginia Wesleyan University. And uh, I was a double major in theater and history. And mm -hmm. I think I was actually, this sounds really weird and kind of trite, but I think I was actually like born to be a dramaturg because <laughs> I was that person that would come to rehearsals in undergrad with like a bunch of research I had done about the play. Cause I was just so excited about just like sort of cracking into that world as an actor. And so I, you know, sort of, you know, what we now call the sort of hunting gathering phase of dramaturgy. That was always how I kind of started my process anyway. And so my advisor, who is actually still at Virginia Wesleyan University, her name is Dr. Sally Shedd, one day sort of sat me down and said, Martine, not that you're not a great actor, but there is this field called dramaturgy. Have you heard of it? <laughs> and I was like, no, tell me more. And then she explained what it was. And I was like, that thing, I want that. <laughs> That, that sounds awesome. And so then it became this really weird thing where uh, we had a requirement where we had to, as undergrads, we had to audition for everything, but I didn't want to audition for anything. I just wanted to dramaturg all the shows. <laughs> and so then she was like, no, Martin, you still have to audition, but if you don't get in the show, you can dramaturg it. So then that just sort of set me on my path. So I did that and then uh, right. I went to grad school for that and then just kept going to grad school because I'm going for punishment. And then, <laughs> and then here we are. Awesome. Oh, that's so great. So it does seem like research and kind of understanding the world of the play is a huge part of what, what dramaturgs do. Mm -hmm. um, and so tell me all of the jobs that you do now. You are a, a teacher, uh, all the things, just kind of- Like that I specifically do or that- Yeah, what are, what, what what are, are all the titles do do? and all the things <laughs> and all the organizations you usually work with and like OSF and that. that uh, okay, great. I um, like, I don't have any wood to knock on, but I'm a knock on it. I am an assistant <sighs> professor, but I'm up for tenure right now. Imagine going up for tenure in these really interesting times and that's me. <laughs> Uh, so I'm an assistant professor at the State University of New York at New Paltz, which is lovely. I'm the head of theater studies there. And I am a freelance dramaturg. I work at places like the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, um, Court Theater in Chicago, uh, Salt Lake Acting Company in Salt Lake, Utah. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm blanking out. Oh, some lots of places. And, oh, and, yes. oh, the Kennedy Center. Oh, yeah. Uh, love them. Where, Sorry, Kennedy Center, I love you. <laughs> uh, and, and other places like yeah. that. I also am the president of the Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of the Americas, but I'm actually the outgoing president. I have a few months left in my tenure and then I get to move into past president fame. And then our cool. new president, Brian Moore, will take over at the end of our virtual conference in June. Wow, awesome. Okay. All right, so let's get to the nitty gritty of what a dramaturg does. So if you were starting 
let's say, I mean, there's several categories, right? There's like, what does a dramaturg do on a classic play like Shakespeare? What does a dramaturg do in a brand new world premiere play? What does a dramaturg do in a workshop or a kind of modern American classic? I mean, they're all different things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of niche dramaturgy as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been kind of interesting because the, the, the field has become so vast in how dramaturgs are being used. You know, like I just did some what I affectionately call music turgy, which is not the same as being a musical theater dramaturg. Ooh, I actually okay. dramaturged a piece for the Louisville Orchestra a couple of years ago, uh, which was so fun and interesting, but it makes perfect sense because music tells a story as well. And if a dramaturg is about helping a group of collaborators tell the best story they can tell, that makes sense. Um, but, you know, they're, they're classical dramaturgs, and that's actually how I got my start. I started as a classical dramaturg um, in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, I don't get to do as much classical dramaturgy anymore. What I've been doing is a lot of what I affectionately call Shakespeare adjacent, like the Book of Will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's what I would call Shakespeare adjacent, about Shakespeare, but not Shakespeare. <laughs> uh, and then uh, there's new play dramaturg, which is a whole new skill set. And I think that's part of the reason why the field has become slightly more niche is that mm -hmm. there are some basic things that you just need to know in order to be a dramaturg. But then there are things that you need to know if you're doing other things, other skill sets. Like if you're a musical theater dramaturg, it really yeah. helps if you can read music. <laughs> you know, just totally. stuff like that. <laughs> Right, and then I think yeah. new play musical theater dramaturgy is very different than already established musical dramaturg musical theater dramaturgy. Yeah, so it gets really specific um, in terms of the kinds of skill sets that you need. And I think you know, depending on what people who are dramaturgs want to do, you can kind of meld different skill sets and mm -hmm. kind of become either someone that branches or uh, goes across lots of different types of dramaturgy. I think I go across quite a few. Yeah. I do a lot of new musical dramaturgy as well as musical theater dramaturgy, as well as new play dramaturgy, as well as classical dramaturgy and contemporary African-American theater. Like Wilson is definitely very mm -hmm. much in my wheelhouse, things like that. So yeah. uh, and then, you know, there's dance turgy. Dance turgy. Yeah, and well, that's super. I everything am, turgy. <laughs> right? I am so, I'm, and then there are a lot of opera turgs. So, yes, yeah. yeah. so, I mean, there's just some really fun places where you see dramaturgs yeah. pop up. I also noticed that dramaturgs are starting to be hired in art museums. Oh, that's rad. Right? Yeah. And because, and, I mean, you know, back to the same thing, even an art museum is attempting to curate a story. Yeah. Uh, with the, with, wow. the, with someone's artwork, artwork, and, and, I see a lot of dramaturgs starting to move more into sort of producerial, but I think that's also just part of dramaturgy, like the sort of yeah. advocating aspect of it is very producerial. Uh, but then I think sometimes dramaturgs are also a lot of, or tend to be go-getters. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about, uh, so everyone just before we started talking, uh, I was talking about how I just got a, a, some money to secure a theater studies scholarship at my institution, which is super exciting. Uh, and, and, and that's fun. And, you know, part of that is built out of the desire to, uh, to sort of help curate experiences back to telling the story. What does it mean uh, for us to support our theater studies students in the same way that our performance and our design tech people get support? Yeah. So that is, you know, a lot of what we do. Yeah. That was a so, long okay. break, sorry. <laughs> no, I love it. It's, it's why we're here. This is, it's incredible. I mean, so knowing that there's a lot of playwrights that are watching this mm -hmm. um, and people making new plays, directors and, and such. So how do you, what is, let's, let's focus on new play dramaturgy. Sure. Um, <laughs> the ones where the playwright is alive <laughs> and usually next to you. Yeah, so, they're my favorite. There it's we go. Nice you can actually collaborate with the playwright. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love it. I, I remember learning what a dramaturg was when I was a student at, at Emory and they did a, a play of mine. It was the first kind of, one of the first big productions that I'd had that had like just lots of moving pieces. And it was, a, I had a dramaturg and I kind of couldn't believe that I could ask them. It was a history play. So there was things like, you know, writing, I wrote that there was a chocolate cake in the play. And he of course was like, well, actually at this point in England, they drank chocolate, they didn't eat it. And I was like, <laughs> wow, do you know anything? <laughs> you know, and then of course the great, there's the research part. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the kind of 
the world of the play part, the goodness and the and the and the solidness of the story and the playwright's vision and all of that. So how do you how do you do that work? What is your relationship with the playwright? Knowing that, of course, each playwright is a little different, but yeah. what are the kind of tenets of new play dramaturgy that have worked for you? That's actually a great question. Uh, number one, I, I just love the fact that you're highlighting something that I think is really important that needs to be said, which is that research dramaturgy is an important part of the job, but it is not the only part of the job. Yeah. Um, and, and we are so much more than that. And, and I think sometimes, unfortunately, people forget that. You know, everyone can use the Google. Everyone can get to a library in ways that we once could not. And so that function, not that it still isn't important, but dramaturgs do many, 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 many other things now. Yeah. But to answer, to really, to get to the to your question, I think, you know, part of new play dramaturgy is being, uh, you know, you know, essentially th that that person that is interested in helping everyone in a room tell the best story that they can tell. And I think, you know, especially in a new play dramaturgy situation, it's kind of weird. Like um, you're, you're essentially collaborator with your, your main sort of jobs are both to the playwright, but then also to the, the institution, the organization, the director that you are also working for, especially if you're doing both in terms of helping the playwright create the text, but then also moving into the rehearsal. Cause those sometimes that can be two different jobs. Right. And then, the, and then sometimes dramaturgs don't always have both jobs. Like I've, you know, helped people, playwrights develop plays, but then didn't necessarily go into rehearsal with them. Um, right. So those are sort of two separate things. But I think, you know, especially in a room, my job is really to make sure that whatever it was that the playwright saw in their own artistic mind is what ends up happening on stage. Yeah. And part so of the reason why- yeah, and I think part of the reason why that's so important, especially with new play dramaturgy, is that we're still like sometimes in the process of trying to just figure out what is that thing in the playwright's head? What did they see when they wrote it? Because I think, you know, especially with words, like you can write the most detailed stage directions in the entire wide world and still, depending on how a director sees it, um, it might not be the same thing. Yeah. And, and, and part of yeah. where one needs to, and, and I know it feels like, and it sounds, but everyone just like, just work with me here. It might sound limiting that the thing that we're trying to do is get at what's in the playwright's head. But really the reason why is because if, if we get there first, then we get to see where it can go. Right. We need to get that thing first in order to then be able to say, okay, now that we've realized that thing, are there potentialities are there are there are there cracks are there you know what are all the things that are sort of left to mine yeah. that haven't been mined yet but we've got to get there first yeah and it's I think like the playwright's vision it's both um perfect because it is the universe that gave birth to the universe of the play what's in the right. mind it's but the it's work. also imperfect because it is the collaborative space of creating a play that you go, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and right. to all of it. And my most successful relationships with dramaturgs have been the one to say, what you have written makes me ask this or makes right. me question this or makes me want exactly. more of this, or makes me go, where does this person character go? And like, it's the saying yes to the playwright's idea means that you have every other question that you can answer to make, to your point, right. the play as good, as rich, as, you know, as it wants to be. As juicy as it wants to be, yeah. I, I, I tell my dramaturgy students that the, a dramaturg is an option giver, not an option doth taketh a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such a great way to say it, yeah. You know, because I think, you know, really the question becomes like, how does every choice, it's like that, you know, that weird butterfly effect thing where like, you know, every choice that you make leads to other options and mm -hmm. like I feel like my job is to say okay we've made this choice and this choice is great let's talk through what are all the permutations and which road do we want to go down now that we've yeah. gone down this particular block um and then once you know if we turn a corner if we go left we go right we go straight doesn't matter the question is like you know and then once we get there the question is then looking at the map that then be that's been created the structure of it all and saying okay this is what we have now this is amazing this is beautiful like how can we make this even more amazing and beautiful or maybe yeah. we'll just get to the end and it's perfect and, and then hey yeah i get to go done fine enjoy, enjoy your opening <laughs> yeah
<laughs> now, how what, have you found, I'm trying to get at, like if somebody who's never worked with a dramaturg before or kind of knows at, at them, knows of them, <laughs> knows at them, um, if, if, from a more removed place or anyway, but what is, what can you ask a dramaturg for help with? I mean, what, what are the, the best ways to use dramaturgs, to engage with them, to bring out your brilliance, to make yeah. our playwrights <laughs> better, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, I think the thing that we're best utilized for is I think the thing that is also probably the scariest thing for a playwright to do, which is to basically say, like, I'm struggling with this, help me figure this out. Yeah, right. You know, and which I think is always sort of hard uh, for anybody, no matter like, you know, I think about my own writing, um, uh -huh. both as an academic um, and then every once in a while I'll write a play because why not? Because no. you do, because. <laughs> it, it, it's a long story, but we'll, we'll, we'll catch up and then I'll tell you more about the thing. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, right? yeah. but, uh, right. but uh, I think it's, it's that, you know, use a dramaturg to, to, to do the thing that is the hardest to do, which is to really say like, I'm struggling with this or yeah, like, right. I'm not sure what to do with this. Cause I, th cause I mean, really and truly and honestly, any dramaturg that is worth their salt, the only thing that they want to do is help you yeah. create the best story you can create. Yeah. So, you know, like if I'm working with a playwright, all I want to do is help them uh, you know, do whatever, whatever conversations, whatever questions I need to ask, et cetera. Those are the things that I'm going to want to ask. I'm going to want to poke at. So usually even when I just start working with a, a, a new play, um, the first thing I always want to do is I always just have a conversation with the playwright before I even read it. I don't want to, usually I tend to yeah, not right. read first unless uh, I don't have a choice um, because I just want to know like, who, who is this person? Who is this artist? Like, what are the things that I can, like, what is important to them as human being? Because a lot of that, you will feel the undertones of that in any work that they create. And I want to get a sense of that before I even read the thing. And then even, and then usually I'll read the thing and then I will ask, you know, a second set of questions, which are, you know, what is the story that you're hoping to tell? You know, I know it sounds like a, a, a terrible question to ask, but it's actually a really important question to ask, which is what are the what do you want an audience to take away from a oh, story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because in the end, like I want to, I want to see if like what I read on the page is like what they're hearing in their own minds and artistic eye, artistic eye. And then, you know, moving forward from there, I'm, you know, asking questions like, okay, if someone says that I'm not sure about this character, you know, and I think I'm also there to also be a bit of a cheerleader, if that makes yeah. any sense, because yeah. I think sometimes like it's easy and I, you know, and like I said, I know this from my own writing experience. Sometimes it's, it's it can be uh, intimidating. It can be hard. Like you, especially if there's something that you know is a bit of a weakness. Hmm. Like I've been there when like playwrights have actually managed to get it, and then they still don't believe they got it. And so, like you know, trust a dramaturg. If a dramaturg is like, stop touching that thing. <laughs> just leave it alone. <laughs> Cut and print. <laughs> exactly. Just, just let it go. You know, trust them because, um, you know, back to my, my, my only goal is to help the playwright write the thing they wanted to write. And so now granted that could always change. Like if you decided that like this thing or this character or this event or whatever, isn't quite what you want anymore now that you've got it, that's one thing, but you yeah. know, I think it's always, you know, uh, um, I, I say that sometimes what we do is we, you know, we take the keyboard away, like, let it go. It's okay. Let's just hear it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Let's, let's just, just hear, hear it. it. And, and, and how and, to talk about it, finding ways to talk about the, the question in the room. I mean, I remember my first plays I wanted to have, I thought the playwright's job was to have all of the answers. So a question would come mm -hmm. up and I would say, sounds like a lot of well, here's how, well, yeah, right. Here's, here's how I've already answered that in the text that you've been given, as opposed to that is such a great question. How can I change the text if it feels like a, a valuable note to me? How can I, what does this allow me to think anew and how do I do it? And, and also the critical thing of saying, I don't know, learning yeah. the power of as a playwright going, that is a great question. I have no idea oh, I, right. the answer. Yeah. Let's dramaturg, you and I shall go have a drink and we'll talk <laughs> this out. about this question. <laughs> it's so interesting that you mentioned that because I actually say that a lot to my students as well. It's like, you know, our job is not to know all, like part yeah, yeah. of what, of what we did, we discover it in the room. And even then we don't always discover all. I'm sure, I don't know any playwright that is not like, if, if given an opportunity to keep tinkering, 
<laughs> would not like, I mean, they'd probably just keep tinkering and tinkering and tinkering. Forever. Um, <laughs> right. Um, and, and, you know, and I think, you know, and, and that's fine, like, but then it's not because then you just torture yourself as an artist. So yeah. really the question is, where do you leave the space that it can grow into like whatever sort of magical world it can be? Like, I always think one of the, my favorite things in the entire wide world is to work on multiple versions of the same thing. I know it might sound oh, that's cool. boring, but like I've done, for example, several Tempests, I've done several Fences and each one has been really different. And it's always amazing to me how these different amazing things can come out of the same mm -hmm. text. Yeah. But I think that is the, the lovely space that you want to leave it in where there's just enough, where there's like a brilliant world that can happen that every time it happens, it still is the essence and, and very close to the thing that you want, but just enough space where like, it can be something brilliant and beautiful the next time around. And I love what that. I'm to do. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so great. And so in terms of like, we were kind of talking about once a show gets to that premiere and kind of when you're in the room with actors, with a director, you got a design team, all of that which is amazing, um, but that's a far distance from, from some people just starting out. Like draft one of the play, you got to the end of the script, you're like- Congratulations, yay. Woohoo! <laughs> is it, who do I give it to? I get that question a lot. Will you, people asking me if, to read their plays, which is an amazing honor that someone would, would ever want me to do that. Um, but my first response is like, you actually don't want me because <laughs> I always want to talk to dramaturgs about it. So how how like if there's just a playwright who would love a relationship with somebody who is a dramaturg or has a dramaturgical background kind of how do you approach that how would you suggest writers out there who have a their first or second or third draft mm -hmm. they want some new eyes on it they want to have a, a smart conversation about it how would you recommend them finding a dramaturg mm -hmm. or oh. yeah there are all sorts of amazing places you can go on the LMDA website. There's a, a find a dramaturg tab that's up at the top, one of the drop down menus. So you can go find one that is locally to you. Um, so and then, yeah, the new play exchange also has a, a button that you can use in order to find dramaturgs who are looking for work and are near you as well. Oh, which I think it's uh, also great. Right. I also think like sometimes word of mouth is great. I think depending on what kind of help you need and like what your ability is to potentially like compensate. I think yes, of course. Also, pay your dramaturgs. Right. <laughs> pay them. Yeah. Pay everybody. Right. I know. Pay everybody, including your dramaturgs. Yes. Um, but I think also sometimes like I think I've had friends ask me to do things like, you know, can, can we give their play a whirl in my dramaturgy class? You know, and that is a very interesting and free way to get yeah. <laughs> some dramaturgical feedback wow. because, you know, I think, you know, the, the process of new play dramaturgy is such, like, it's hard to teach it mm -hmm. until you just do it. You have right, to right, right. do it. And so the easiest way that I found to do it is like to ask playwright friends of mine who are writing things like, is there, is there something we can work on in my, in my dramaturgy class. Oh, that's so um, cool. And I've done that in the past. I didn't get to do it this time around, which made me a little sad, but, um, but that was mostly because I just didn't have, uh, admittedly, I just didn't have the time to like go around skulking around being like, all right, who wants, who lets, who wants to let my team's class have a, have a crack at that. Um, <laughs> that's such but, a good, I just want to repeat yeah. those resources because that's yeah. awesome. The yeah. LMDA website, the New Play Exchange, all of those websites you should all as writers be familiar with, but that is such amazing advice. Mm -hmm. And like, that is actually who you want reading your play. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody. And I think, and I think especially with like, uh, in, in, if you can manage to, you know, contact your local university and you have, there's some, there's a, yeah. you know, person who teaches dramaturgy, I think they would love the opportunity. Cause that's the thing, you know, even from the last time I taught dramaturgy where we had a playwright whose play we worked on, the students still to this moment still talk about how, cause we would have the playwright Skype in and so we would have conversations about oh, the cool. play. And, and, and I think they really just enjoyed a, uh, it was a good learning experience for them. I think it was also like, you know, depending on where this person was in their journey in terms of working with dramaturgs, it's really great for them too, because they got to see what it's like to just, you know, watch dramaturgs try to figure out like how to ask a question in a way that doesn't sound like you're accusing them of anything 
right. or, <laughs> which is always important. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and just watching them formulate those questions, but then also just getting all the perspectives. And in a lot of ways, you can get a lot of perspectives really quickly if you're, if you're mining something like a dramaturgy class. And especially with like young um, uh, uh, up and coming artists, I think they're really interested in what people are writing about and want to know more about the process. I think it's also just a really fun experiment for everybody yeah. that um, I think, you know, you, you could always just ask some of the playwrights that have had the unfortunate pleasure of being <laughs> on the opposite. And I'm just kidding. I think they actually enjoyed it. But, you know, getting getting all these like random questions about yeah. their play. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, and, and I think I tell my students all the time, the thing that you have to remember about collaboration that is that it's actually collaborative. Mm. Like, what a dramaturg says is not law. Like if, 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 if you want, you know, if, if you're, if you're, if you give a note and like a playwright always has the opportunity to say, no, I don't want to take that note. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. because, you know, and I even say this, even with playwrights that I work with now, like the, the top of a lot of my emails are always just like, please take these. If these are useful to you, use them. If they are not useful to just pretend like they don't exist because I want you to create the thing that you saw in your head. Yeah, so but sometimes mm -hmm. the note, even if you don't take it, clarifies something, clarifies mm -hmm. like, no, that is not right, which is help. That's helpful right. to go. I am very sure that that is not the where I want to go, but thank right. you so much for offering it. <laughs> right. And, and, yeah. I, and I think one of the things that um, I also talk to, sort of, uh, you know, just amongst my own circle, dramaturgy circles, et cetera, is that like, in the end, my job isn't necessarily to like, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I tend to, to look at plays very logically hmm. as well as emotionally, but logic first. So the question to, you know, it's always the, the, the questions that should be asked, like, what is this story? Have we told this story? And then like hmm. sort of tapping into the emotion of it, uh, which is why I think most dramaturgs, and I think a lot of dramaturgs, I could be assuming a lot, um, because who knows how everybody's brain works. But I think uh, in the end, we are always looking to um, make sure that, you know, we are remembering that what's most important is that we are serving the story that is in front of us, as opposed right. to like turning it into anything else. So uh -huh. I would never want anyone to take a note that wasn't useful. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That no, was a little friendly. Sorry about that. No, I love it. I mean, this is because it's such a critical role, dramaturg, mm -hmm. um, but it can be so many things and can kind of shrink and grow depending on the team and the needs of the play that it is a little hard to pin down, but that's kind of what's amazing about it. And, and, yeah. and, and also the most frustrating thing to, it makes it frustrating to try and teach sometimes because right. it's just like, well, how do, you, how do you do this thing? And I think, you know, especially for me, I'm like, well, there's an artistry to it, I think, everyone brings a piece of themselves to the art of dramaturgy. Mm -hmm. Like for me, because um, I would, I, I feel like I'm a sort of sympathetic, empathetic person. A lot of the place where I live tends to be about really making sure that I am holding up, I'm holding, I'm bolstering the right. work that the playwright that I'm working with has done while also remembering that like, you know, you know, sort of pushing while also saying it, you know, like we can get it there. Um, but you know, I'm just rambling now. So yeah, but so what? No, you're not rambling. I didn't mean to be like yes, yes, you are. No, <laughs> I'm I'm thinking of like all the things I want to ask you. Um, I mean, so I'd love to know about the kind of interpersonal part of a dramaturg, like working with a writer and a director and actors, and kind of how you surf those relationships and and if you consider that's what you do, um, how, to kind of you know, because working with a lot of people means working with a lot of people and different personalities. And sometimes <laughs> yeah. they're on the same page and sometimes it's yeah, not, on the, same not page. on the same page. But you know, we all have to get on the same page. So how do you, yeah. how, how do you talk or teach that yeah. strange part? And, and that's, that's the thing that's, you know, the part where it gets hard because part of, you know, what a dramaturg finds himself doing is like, um, I, I am, I am, I would say, and, and not to be weird and kind of like place uh, any kind of weird gender stereotype on it, but I think I practice a lot of momaturgy. Oh, uh, <laughs> in the in the sense that <laughs> I just put turgy at the end of everything. But like yeah, I'm that it. person that like you know I, I learned a long time ago during tech. Sometimes the last thing that a director wants is like a, a dramaturg poking around, and so like I'm there to like 
hold my playwright's hand to bring some cookies to like, you know, take notes, obviously see things, you know, see things. And then like once like the, 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 the hurdle of like that push that 12 out of 12 is over, then like, uh. okay, saw these things, love you, here's some notes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. um, I, uh, the interpersonal part, I think, is probably the hardest part to navigate because really what you're doing is trying. I don't think it's, it, it's a dramaturg's job to keep anybody happy. Yeah. But I think it is a dramaturg's job to try and make modes of communication as clear as possible. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and I think especially uh, in a collaborative art that is visual, sometimes there are things that are, people are seeing that aren't necessarily being articulated well. I think sometimes we become that translator. Um, oh, that's think, smart. Yeah. yeah. I and think, a safe person to bring something yeah. to. I mean, yeah. Cause I mean, you know, back to really no other, there's nothing else that I'm trying to do besides help everyone create the best story yeah. that we can, we can tell. I have no other ulterior motives. Yeah. So, you know, if I see things brewing, if I see things that are, you know, coming I, um, in terms of like the proverbial train wreck that might be coming down the road, like, uh, you know, I'm also there to, to have those conversations, but I think, um, I haven't had, I haven't had that where I need wood. I keep saying things and I'm like, I need to, I have a marble table, I'm like, sure. <laughs> I need wood. but I haven't had one of those situations in a really yeah. long time. Um, and I think the more you progress, like in the field, there's less tolerance for that kind of behavior. And I so, hope so to me, I hope that's what it is. <laughs> I, I hope, I mean, I, I do think that is one great bit of advice and, and realistic sensibility about for those out there. I think it does pay to be nice. Yeah. Like you don't need to be walked all over. That's right. you're not giving your power away, but to lead with kindness and to lead with the fact that we're all making a thing together and it'll be better. if We respect each other lead, lead with that. Right. Um, so to me, it seems like the more hallowed institutions that I get to work with, it's like generally the nicer the people. Um, not that people at small institutions are not nice, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes you weed out just the troublemaking personalities, the divas and the whatevers. <laughs> hey, you know? I, I mean, it's interesting because I think, you know, f for me, I'm, I don't, I, I guess I, I approach dramaturgy and theater making and art making is that nothing is set in stone until the thing is like open. Yeah, right. And so to me, and maybe some of it is just like my demeanor, just like my, my humanness that like, if I see something like, if, you know, I have a playwright that's really upset about something that's happening. I was like, we can, we can have a conversation. This, this isn't over yet. Right. Right. Like, let, let's have a conversation, figure out what it is. That's not quite going the way you see it. And then let's like, let's go together. Like I will hold your hand. We're going to go have a conversation with the director. You know, we'll have a conversation with the producer. We'll have, you know, whoever it is that we need to have a conversation with, but like, that's great. You know, until the thing is open, there's always room. That's and, awesome. And, and I think that that outlook has served me well, at least personally. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's true because there's no reason to give up to your point. Right. Like it's not open until it's open. So we can right. continue yeah. having these conversations depending and, and continue saying, I don't know until we know. I mean, right. that's right. what, what it what, is. It's what it is. <laughs> And you know, it's interesting, I, I think for playwrights, for playwrights out there, it's also a way to, you can learn to speak the same language as your dramaturg. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm a very structure-based fixer of a story. I kind of need to know, have I lined up the dominoes in the best way? And talking in those terms very quickly helps me see how to rewrite, how to adjust, you know, how to, how to fix a scene that's not working or an act that's not working and mm -hmm. kind of finding a dramaturg that that's, that's part of their, their, their skills, but also that I can kind of let them know how I talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, that maybe talking to me about like deep character subtext is not the conversation not that's going to actually get me the rewrites. I need to be like, <laughs> but plot wise, <laughs> but dramatic structure wise, <laughs> But I think that's really important. That's, you know, back to why I have a tendency to talk to playwrights first before I even read yeah. the play. I just want to get a feeling for who, who they are, what makes them tick, like, what are, you know, where are the places we connect? Um, because I think that gives a lot of clues uh, yeah. as to like, you know, what is it that's going to resonate for them? And, and this is part of the intuitive part, the part where like a dramaturg has to really be 
listening in order to mm. hear like um like I I um not to be weird or anything but I find that I can tell pretty quickly like talking to a playwright you know I can sort of discern what are their fears and I don't mean fears yeah. like what's the bump in the night but just like about the process like yeah. you know you know and and some of it's even just like I try to have conversations in person you know or like at least face to face in some way shape or form as possible because you can see that like slight eye twitch that happens when you say something like talk back or like what are they talking about exactly you know or you know those those types of things where you say okay I can tell that this that is not something that they're really excited about so we're going to try and see if we can steer away from that or if we have to have it do we have to like have them involved with it like I think about that all the time like I work with Great Plains Theater Conference yeah a lot and I love them so much because of the way that they approach um new play dramaturgy hmm. but we know they you playwrights have options yeah they can have a talk back not have a talk back they can have a public one a private one all sorts of stuff and hmm. uh and 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 I just enjoy so much watching the things but I also feel like part of my job is to poke a little bit like it's the reason why you don't want a public talk back because you're scared what people are saying or hmm. is it because like you just don't feel like it's at that point where you're you know like, right what, what are those things? Because I think sometimes, and not that I'm like about talking people out of things they want, but you know, back, it's back to like, you know, is it, is it at a place where it needs to hear what yeah. someone besides you and me think about it? <laughs> right. Um, and, 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 and then even finding ways around that. Like, can I just collect all that information from people and then just give it to you in a, in a format that like makes you feel uh, better about sorting through it? Like, I'm happy to do all those things because back to no ulterior motive, but then to help you yeah. create the best thing that you can create. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I do think there is a blend of some of the, uh, or the original thing we were talking about, about the research component of what a dramaturg does um, mm -hmm. and how incredibly helpful that is for actors and directors and designer. I mean, to have that free flow of information and to be able to ask a question and have somebody be able to say, I know where to find that piece of information. Should it be useful? Um, but it's also interesting because I write a lot of history plays, as you know, Book of Will's history play. So there was times when the research part is the new play part, you know, what I mean? where like we need to figure out what the hell, who was king in this exact right. year of this country at this mm -hmm. moment? And how can I make a joke about that or not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's interesting, like how quickly you have you must have to kind of switch hats mm -hmm. as you go along. Uh, and and I, I think that's probably another thing that, you know, a lot of dramaturgs have to do. And I think, you know, obviously like back to pros and cons, some dramaturgs do that better than others. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I I actually enjoy that, but I think, you know, as, as my, my spouse says, I have a bit of a squirrel brain. So, <laughs> and not squirrel brain as in like size, but like if I see a shiny object, I'm over here. So sometimes, and that actually having multiple things running around in my brain at the same mm. time sounds this sounds really weird but it actually helps me focus interesting yeah <laughs> so if you know uh, so I don't I'm very much that person who like can be watching something and then someone ask a question I don't know the answer but then I can like keep it an ear out while also like looking for that thing and it I don't know there's just been something strange about my brain that allows me to do that, <laughs> that I'm actually weirder when I only have one thing to focus on <laughs> Which probably makes me a very strange human being. But no, kind of you sound it. like, oh, honestly, no. you sound like a lady. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I think we have to be able to be like, at least it's, it reminds me of my mom brain of going, get the Lego, fix the thing, make the dinner, mm -hmm. still thinking about my play and act two, you know, right. <laughs> all the things somehow managed to settle into right. some arrangement yeah. the now, only time I, the only time I can't have anything else going on in my head is when I'm grading that, that oh, has yeah, yeah. the only thing happening in my head at any but other than okay. that that's so great about it it really does make you zero in right. um how do you work with actors and designers and kind of the other people we've talked about directors and we've talked about writers but how do you work with the other people oh I love it this is actually my um it's you know all of it's my favorite part I should I should not discriminate but uh, I'm actually in the process of finishing up a book with, uh, so back to that scholarly part of my existence, with uh, Jesse Portillo, who's a lighting designer based oh, in California, about uh, the intersections of dramaturgy and design. Ooh. And Get I actually, right? Uh, it, it's, uh, I'm excited. We just got to finish up some revisions, then we'll hopefully be ready to go. Uh, my goal is to be done with that by this summer. But um, 
one of the things that I really actually enjoy is talking to designers. Uh, and part of the reason why is because, you know, back to if we're creating a world, uh, everything in the world matters in terms of how like this, the story is coming alive. And so uh, I find myself always, whether asked or not, in design meetings, because I want to hear oh, yeah. how people are interpreting the text, especially if it's a new play. Like, how are people hearing this thing that I've been working or like, you know, at least hearing like in, in their own visual mind's eye, this thing that I've been working on with this playwright for, you know, in, in, our, in, like in our solitude for a while. Like, how are people envisioning this world? What are the things people are picking? What like kernels are people picking up on and running with versus what are the things that maybe they leave behind or uh, right, they right, address, right. but not like, you know, in a huge way. I want to know those things because you know, I'm, you know, because usually people will give you clues as to what it is that they heard in the story that really sparked their visual interest. And I think that's part of it. I'm very visually oriented as a human being, like small known fact about Martine. Um, I, I used to be and still am on occasion a visual artist. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, so I think that just part of that was always interesting to me, um, how, how these worlds are coming alive visually. And so uh, I spend a lot of time doing two things as a dramaturg, one talking to directors, like one of my favorite directors to work with besides Chris Moore, who we worked oh. with on Book of Will, is Ron O.J. Parson, based out of Chicago. And he, like, we have conversations sometimes before he's even talked to any designers about the world of the play. Cause, huh. And then he has tendency to like fold me into those conversations because he has ideas about things that he thinks and he's like, okay. And he's that, he's such an amazingly um, dramaturg friendly director because he's just like, I wanna make sure that what I'm saying is rooted in the text. Hmm. Um, and Chris is, a, you know, Chris Moore is very similar in that. Just want to be rude in the text. Uh, yeah. Same thing with uh, Timothy Douglas. Like they're just really interested in, in doing work that's rooted in a text. And, and to do that then means that there has to be some interaction with the dramaturgs and the designers because back to what is this world that the playwright uh, wants to create and like, are there any, for example, gaps in that? Like, is there is some weird, is there some space between how like the text is being interpreted um, because these are also important things for a dramaturg to take back to a playwright and say, okay, right, yeah. there's a space here. And this is what this production is thinking that they're going to do with that. What do you think? Do yeah. we need to be, do we need to be more specific? Do we need to clarify something about this world in order so that we don't go there? Or do you like that openness? Yeah, because that's, that's a, such a critical question because it yeah. really is, it feels like, and, and I think the great teams include the playwright and those design Mm -hmm. conversations early but sometimes the playwright doesn't quite know right. I don't actually know I know what this part of it looks like but I don't know what that looks like mm -hmm. and being asked or shown again you get this like oh not that whatever right. it is is not that yeah or if we do that but then we lose the this or that you know it just brings up all the questions which right. once again it seems like the dramaturg is kind of the carrier of possibility the carrier of questions <laughs> Exactly. I mean, yeah. really, my job yeah. is to question, and not necessarily in a weird way. Just no. You know, there, I think every text is full of possibilities, and I just want to make sure we're mining all of them for the ones that make sense for the world we're trying to create. I love that. Yeah. Now, so, so for that's so fascinating. So, if you wanted to be a dramaturg, there was a baby Martine out in the world. <laughs> um, <laughs> what would you? What would you tell them to do to get their feet wet? To try to? I don't know. Right. What would the advice to them? Would uh, I mean, the thing that's so interesting is that I think there are so many different ways of approaching this thing called dramaturgy. So I think maybe the best thing that I would suggest someone to do, like if you're if you're college aged, you know, or you're in college, you know, take a take a dramaturgy class if one yeah. exists. Um, because obviously, like no better way to sort of start to understand what this world is. I think past that, if you know you're out in the world and you're just trying to figure it out, go find some of like you know who are the who are the dramaturgs you're working with, um, right. or who, where who who are the dramaturgs that are saying things that make sense to you, um, because you know unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, dramaturgs are either super quiet or really loud. <laughs> <laughs> But then I will say one way, if you're like, how do I find a dramaturg that, and I agree with them, like 
often one of your jobs is to write those beautiful think pieces and mm -hmm. articles and programs or on the mm -hmm. websites to kind of dig deeper into the play for audience members. Cause that's another person you work with is the audience, right? You know, how exactly. do patrons and audience and viewers of this play mm -hmm. who want to know more, who want to know background, who want to know context, who want to know a little bit about the history they're about to see dramatized. So you, you do all that as well, which means you got to be a good, good writer. Right. As well. Yes. Yes. But reading those think pieces and going like, Ooh, that person is smart. Yeah. Maybe they have an email address. Right. Maybe. And that's exactly what I was going to say next is, I mean, really, you know, who, you know, if you happen to find that there's a particular, you know, just look at who's the dramaturg listed on playbills that yeah. of shows that you really like. And hopefully there is a dramaturg. I'm looking at people who still don't hire dramaturgs. I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. She's coming. <laughs> She's coming. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, who is the dramaturg? And then like, just reach out. Cause I think one of the things that you'd be surprised to discover is that most dramaturgs are used to just not really having their praises sung, not having anyone pay any attention. I find that in, in my life, like, uh, in general, uh, the only time anyone ever actually really talks to me about like, you know, anyone out of the blue shows up in my inbox, I should say, uh, is if, you know, I'm associated with a show that they're upset with. But then the funny thing about it is that um, I've actually never had that happen. It's always been shows that people are like, were you the dramaturg on this? Cause there was no dramaturg listed. And I know that you work with them sometimes and I'm like, no, 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 no. I had nothing to do with that. That's funny. You're like, oh, <laughs> don't, don't fight. Don't, don't, don't bring this to my doorstep. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, it's just funny. Cause I've actually had that happen. It happens a lot less now that um, yeah. I'm uh, no longer uh, in Utah, but yeah. they, cause I think like, in, you know, there, there are other dramas. People would get mad. But like, you know, there'd be some, something and they're like, how did you let this happen? And I was like, I ain't had nothing to do with that. What you talking about? <laughs> uh, and literally had nothing to do with that show. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I mean, just because I'm in town doesn't mean I'm the only person around. Uh, <laughs> but and now, uh, have you been a literary manager or literary director as well? Uh, that's something we haven't really talked about. Yeah. I have, it's like, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's been a while. I was the literary manager for the classical theater company, which is a mm -hmm. small theater company down in Houston that still exists. Um, I did that for a couple of years and that was fun. Uh, and what does that job kind of entail? That's a lot of reading yeah. of plays, I imagine. Yes. yes. There's also a lot of sort of administrative mm. shenanigans to it. Um, depending on where you work, sometimes the literary manager is responsible for hiring outside dramaturgs. Cool. work on things sometimes part of their job is to dramaturg things while also uh doing you know while also hiring other dramaturgs they tend to do a lot more season mm -hmm. planning than uh just a, a freelance dramaturg yeah. or even sometimes resident dramaturgs at a place so if there's a literary manager and a resident dramaturg usually that sort of administrative part mm -hmm. um of curating seasons is there um, if they run new play competitions, a lot of times it's a lot of reading or figuring out the system by which uh, plays get read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, there's usually a lot of connection between literary managers and education oh, yeah, programs. Because right. back to the sort of administrative part of it is like where, where the places of intersection between education at a theater and mm -hmm. literary management. Also, a lot of literary managers deal with um, and, and work closely with development folk, et cetera. And not that dramaturgs don't do this too, because a lot of it also just depends on structure. Like, I've, you know, like at court, the resident dramaturg does a lot of the same functions that you would assign to the literary manager. They kind of straddle both worlds. But then, yeah. so it really just depends on the place. But like when I was at Classical Theater Company, my job was really to have conversations with um, the managing director and the artistic director about what the next season was. What's the next play? And yeah. I heard from, I think it was Julie Dubiner who basically was saying that, um, I mean, dr dramaturgs know each other and literary managers know each other. So for playwrights out oh. there, <laughs> even, if, yeah, even if one theater says, no, thank you, we loved this play, but we can't do it. Oftentimes that means that there's a literary manager out there that has already emailed it to five of her or his mm -hmm. colleagues Mm -hmm. to say, you should read this. It, we couldn't find a place for it, but I love this play. Or, you know, the yeah. idea of the advocates that you may not even know you have yeah. as a playwright. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that I would also just advocate for playwrights to say is like, let's say 
you know, you submitted in a, in a, to a, to a theater and the theater is like, yeah, love this, but not, not now, not, not, not here right now, mm-hmm. you know, feel free to ask the question. Do you know a place that might be interested? Like, oh, do you smart. mind passing it on? Or like, you know, do you mind helping like me make a connection with that other dramaturg, that other literary manager? Cause I, if the play is really speaks to a dramaturg, I don't know any dramaturg that's like, okay, I love this thing. Even though we can't program it here, I'm just gonna pretend like it doesn't exist. Like we yeah, want right. plays to be done. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, like I have, you know, numerous times for numerous playwrights that I've worked with said, okay, like, I, I like, you know, especially since I'm not attached to a theater, like a lot of times I will read things. And I'm like, okay, here are the places that I think might be really interested in it. And then I'm always happy to do an intro. Yeah, that's because great. what do I have to lose? If it's a play that I like, like what's the worst that can happen? They get produced somewhere. Yeah, sounds right. like, so, sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> that sounds like a win and a win right. and another win. Exactly. Um, that's awesome. We're closing in on our hour. So well, I, time go? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so I don't know if there, is there a, any other thing that you want to talk about or what you would say to the wide world of new yeah. plays? Uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like this doesn't, I mean, this needs to be said. Um, and I'm looking forward to the day when it doesn't need to be said, but like hire a dramaturg, you know, bet your dramaturg, obviously, like you should bet a dramaturg like you would any other artistic collaborator. But if you re- if you if you bet your dramaturgs, get yourself a good one that's good for you and for like the thing you're trying to do, I can promise you will never regret it. Yeah. Like never. I have such Agreed. amazing, amazing relationships with playwrights that I've worked with in the past, including you. And I just think those are some of the most amazing artistic collaborations that you can find out there and they're rewarding. And, and they are just brilliant. So like always try to search them out. Like don't be, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't and be for search. me too. I mean, dramaturgs <laughs> yeah, I've worked with in the past when I'm stuck on a thing, I can reach out to them and say, mm-hmm. I am stuck on this thing. Mm-hmm. I haven't told anybody I've even written this yet, but would right. you, can I throw you a hundred bucks or some coffee or blah, 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 well, and we, yeah. we talk and about that- it. And, and, and that's the thing that dramaturgs really do actually like to do. We'd love to, we'd love to come back to people that we've worked with before in the past and like continue to just see what they're, what they're up to and what they're writing. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, so like always feel free. Like, obviously, like if you're busy, you're busy, but, <laughs> right, <of course laughs> but like if you can if, um, find, find a dramaturg that really speaks to your aesthetic, yeah. find one that really seems to understand the soul of the thing that, that you're trying to write. And then like, don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to ask for recommendations. Like, you know, I think a lot of my work has been through recommendation and word of mouth and that's great and that's fine. I I feel like that means I'm doing something right if people are still like wanting to actually say my name in a positive way once once they're done with me. Um, But, you know, just don't be afraid of dramaturgs. We're really excited. And like I said, if, if we're worth our salt, we are just there to help. You were like theater's biggest fan. Like you were just exactly. New Play's biggest fan, which is exactly. always the people I want to be around. <laughs> That's what I It's always weird to me. People are like, oh, I don't know about working with a drama director. I'm like, well, baby, why, why do you not know? Like, we're, oh, we love the best friend theater. you haven't met yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I, well, and I make good cookies. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And some of them make cookies. So it's great. Some of them. <laughs> Well, you're the first person I thought of when I thought we need a dramaturg to, oh, to tell the world about dramaturgy. So thank you for all that you do. And I will say that my very highest compliment for a director, an actor, a designer is to say that they have a dramaturgical mind. So dramaturgs are your people. Dramaturgs are all of our people. If you believe in new plays, if you believe in great storytelling, you love dramaturgs already. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and if you can think about donating to Literary Managers and Dramaturgs of America, Yay. Um, donate to your local theater, your artists, the artist mm-hmm. groups that you know, obviously mm-hmm. I can't say it enough how uh, valuable those organizations are, even though they can't be producing in the same way now, but we mm-hmm. need to throw them support. Mm-hmm. 
and all the other organizations that are taking care of the artists, not just the institutions. So thanks for all of that. And thank you so much, Martine, you're thank the greatest. You. Thank you. Virtual hugs. Right, and exactly. <laughs> and hopefully real hugs one day. One day very, very soon, <laughs> very soon. All right, thank you again. And um, I'm, I'll go through the comments and see if there's anything I can offer. And maybe I'll wrote Martina in if she, there's a- Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm very happy to answer any questions. And you know, people can feel free to find me on, uh, on Twitter, like at Martine Key or yeah. through the LMD website website or whatever like Great. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions yeah all right thank you and thank you to howlround for yes uh, thank broadcasting you. this and um thanks everybody <laughs>